Hello, welcome to the series of the One Year with the Ramha. And uh, here we're going to uh, get know more about the weekly portion of uh, this week that is Vayikhel. And uh, it starts like that. Vayikhel Moshe et kol edad bnei Israel veyomar elhem ele hadvarim asher tziva Hashem laasototam. And Moses assembled all the congregation of the children of Israel and said unto them, These are the words which God had commanded that you should do them. Okay, uh, and here the Torah speaks extensively and detailed about the construction of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. The, uh, this is the dwelling place uh, in the in the desert of uh, the Creator. The first mention occurs when the individuals contributing donations and everyone gives what they can or wish to give according to their uh, heart. So it is worth nothing that uh, uh, that even the Erev Rav contributes donation during this time. Daber el Bnei Israel. So previously you find in the Torah that we have Daber el Bnei Israel ve'ikhu li et truma me'at kol ish asher idbenu libo tikhu et trumati speaking to the children of Israel that they fake for me an offering of every man whose heart make with him willing that they shall make my offering so these uh, things become very critical when uh, there is a need uh, to sharply distinguish among the Jewish people and uh, we have to separate the Ere Rav who were spiritually is not fitting and were dragging down the level of the Jewish nation. So the creation of the uh, golden calf highlights a, a spiritual regression prompting us to reflect how we reached at this point. So who were uh, those ones that were responsible for in, uh, instigating the spiritual decline. The Erev Rab reveals its true nature when uh, uh, we previously pointed out how it orchestrated its position from the background, waiting for that the spiritual uh, leader Mo Mo uh, Moshe that won't be with the people so that it could be led things to basically the wrong direction. Uh, interestingly, they weren't doing it when Moses were um, uh, close, as the Arab Rav desired. Okay, so here, uh, hence we are on creative the golden calf. It immediately claimed that this is came out of the divine. So this was uh, from the mouth of the Arab Rav. So this is the deepest turning point when this Arab Rav successfully manages to sway others to its side, leading them towards the impure side. Uh, that is called the Tuma, the uh, unsuspecting victims uh, falling uh, to realize what is happening to them. Okay, so it is not a coincidence that after such an incident, there is a need to gather the people again, to reunite. So this is why the sections begins, it's like this. Hashem <laughs> Uh, they uh, take you from among your offering into God, whoever is of willing heart, and let him bring God's offering, gold, silver, and brass. So Moses gathers the Jewish people once again and urges them to contribute donations. So uh, this is everyone included. In this, we still find that the Erev Rav will be within whose negativity won't be sought by the uh, creator. So their donations basically won't be accepted. So this whole process, distinctions begin to identify who is in harmony and who is with not. So uh, from the, the sinners, let us not accept anything. We do not need their energy at all. And everything will be resolved without, them, without their uh, uh, offering, okay? So this will be a crucial point, whose donations will be accepting and whose are not. And 
and they came every one whose heart stirred up uh, stirred him up and everyone who uh, his spirit made willing and brought the God's offering for the work of the tent of the meeting and for all the service thereof and for the holy garment. And they came both men and women, as many are willing, uh, willing hearted and brought nose rings, earrings and signet rings and guiltless all jewels of gold, even every man that brought an offering of gold into uh, the Creator. After the sin of the golden calf, the entire nation felt uh, the devastation, realizing that fundamental uh, reconstruction of the relationship within the community itself and within the divine was necessary. So hence, the need to bring forth new donations for the Mishkan and to follow the spiritual leader Moses' inst instructions more diligently. So according to the Torah, two groups are uh, identified. The first is consisting of those with open hearts, uh, the constant contribution uh, contributors who are willing to make offering all the time. It is interesting that those who generally don't contribute are referred to as generous ones, attributing this quality to them already. So in basically in the pedagogical and the spiritual terms, we observe only positive uh, feedbacks or even superior qualities among ourselves. Rather, and we were saying that those who don't actually give should now start giving. We acknowledge that even they went out of their comfort zone and acted beyond their nature, given the special nature, uh, this for the Mishkan, as uh, the dwelling place of the Creator. So they came, be, uh, they, uh, mm, they become givers also at that point. So Moses' faces, face was said, shine like heaven or described as luminous. So he was on the 32nd level of wisdom, elevating everyone's spiritual level. So the people's level was much lower, obviously, than Moses. So being on the, uh, that he was on the 32nd level, but he basically uplifted everyone. So even those who were generally less charitable became this charitable person, were givers, became givers, and the already charitable were elevated much more. So the Torah describes those people that give less, this kind of group, with the phrase Nadav Rucho. Okay, Nadav, Nun with Nadav, and Reish with Rucho. If we combine these two letters, we arrive to Ner, uh, that is uh, meaning candle, and representing the value of, uh, of the certain uh, Gdusha holiness. It's uh, the total value is uh, 250. So the open-hearted who generally enjoy giving find its nature to give because it aligns with their nature, obviously. When the heart gives easily, they stand on really on a higher spiritual level, corresponding to the level of Ruach. So, and another interesting thing here, we ask, et haki or nachoshet ve'et kanu nachoshet bemarot tzavot asher tzavu betach ochel mohed. And they made the lever of brass and the base thereof brass of the mirrors of serving women that did service at the door of the tent of meeting. So uh, the sages teaches us that the women donated mirrors for the construction of the Mishkan, thereby giving up the ability to gaze to look at their beautiful, uh, their beautiful images. However, this act of uh, renunciation wasn't as self-indulgent vanity but also encompassed for the mitzvah for a woman to remain attractive for her husband making this is a uh, mitzvah for the family as they wanted to please their husband according to Rashi the mirrors were used for the kior the basin for handwashing for the Indomishkan it required a significant sacrifice on part of the woman to make this kind of donation. 
So giving up their mirrors, they wouldn't be able to replace these items afterwards, especially in the desert where acquiring new one wasn't, mm, uh, it, it is not accessible. So this spiritual sacrifice by a woman, those women that they donated, essentially led them to overcome their own yetzer hara, their negativity, and sacrificing themselves for this communal goal, for Bnei Israel. One must never forget this tremendous energy that generated from this sacrifice of those women. Through this, they reached a spiritual uh, elevation, and the Kior basically becoming the place where the Kohanim would also purify themselves through the hand washing. So this high level energy contributed by women will further elevate by the Kohanim, lifting them to even to greater spiritual heights. So this was a, a few ideas of the Vayekher, the portion. And uh, thank you for listening and see you next uh, week. Thank you. Bye-bye.